Everything we do here at Control-Alt-Crit is sponsored by you, our wonderful patrons, over at patreon.com slash control alt crit patrons get access to exclusive content you can't find on twitch or youtube including high quality artwork and exclusive tabletop rpg experiences if you'd like to play more of 21xx pokemon stars or stargate phoenix become a patron today Previously, on Stargate Phoenix. Upon traveling to the planet Dintu, Phoenix Team SG-13 unintentionally start a firefight between two warring factions residing above and below the planet. The lower caste leader, Namsaru, is defeated in the crossfire, and in a show of good faith, the cowering yet pleasant Shamesh brings them to his lavish tower with trappings and a structural function mirroring that of Gwauld technology. Lo and behold, SGP-13 discover that they are in the presence of a benevolent Gwauld. Asked to save a planet from a rebellion invoked by his former First Prime, Shamesh seeks to redeem his past sins with the prospect of shared technology and ancient secrets of a former system lord. Can the team say no? to such an opportunity. Now, the conclusion. I know that the individuals below in our Satan are planning to make the tower fall. It's not a difficult task for them to do because they probably have access to some of the core systems of the Hatak. Underneath our Satan where my ship crash landed is a vast majority of the remains of this ship. I am asking you, as diplomats, as peacekeepers, I assume, as warriors, if you could, I would like you to permanently disable the Hatak underneath. The last thing I need is a self-destruct sequence, effectively destroying everything that these people have tried to build. What do I need to roll to have an idea of what an Hatak is and can do and how it can be disabled? Uh, it could be science or engineering. I'll allow either. For our Jafal, I'll let them roll that same check with advantage. I'm going to use a Eureka point. 17. 20. Both good. Ten. Okay. Eleven. You have had the opportunity to take a look at a lot of the footage of the motherships up close, because the Cheyenne group effectively brought back a lot of that during their encounters. The motherships are multi-story structures. The only thing I can tell you that you uh, would be of great importance is in a situation like this, if he's trying to ensure that the auto-destruct sequence doesn't happen at any point in time, you effectively either need to take out all of the control crystals that operate the ship, or you need to be able to shut down all the technology therein with some good old-fashioned bludgeoning. As a student of Braytac, you probably have done something, like, because he was a former First Prime to Apophis, so a lot of things were... He had privilege and could do a lot of things on a lot of different places. You would know that Apophis' attacks specifically were lavish and over the top, but more specifically, Hatak motherships have a couple of very distinct fail-safes that would be easy to effectively cause sabotage to. If the Death Gliders are still active, they can effectively have their weapons retooled uh, in a way so that way they just become very tiny, small, very small Mac with a box. It would cause a chain reaction and basically bring down the tower. 
it would cause a chain reaction and basically bring down the tower and with uh, and with a hefty enough explosion. Wouldn't it effectively ruin the city if not obliterate yeah. it? It would crater the planet. That's that's okay. that's why I'm saying like that they could do that. We don't want them to do that. The next best way would be just to cause the ship to overload and just explode. But if they don't have all of the crystals to do so, the best bet is by using the ships. Okay. If there were any ships left. How much of that do I know? Do I know about the Death Glider? That the Death Gliders exist? Yes. You on would know Death Gliders exist because... On the Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Because okay. uh, SG teams have to deal with them constantly. Okay. Another question. Will a Death Glider fit through a Stargate? Yes. Your mothership. Is it buried or it underground? Or is it still accessible from the outside air? There are parts of the ship that are still accessible underground. It is effectively crashed and buried. Over the years, the people below have been able to dig out crevices where they were able to access several areas of the ship. I only know this because it's been harder for us to be able to designate power to certain locations because they are already being settled down below. Now, if there are people who are living in, in our Satan that are living in the Hatak, I understand that and I welcome it. But if there is more to it than that, and if they are actually are planning some kind of attack, which through my intelligence I've learned, I can't warrant that to happen, not for my people. Were there any support craft left on your ship? Scout ships, I think maybe one, maybe two. And I'm not sure about any of the other ships. It's been quite some time, a millennia, to be sure. If I wanted to sense motive for why he wants us to help him, that would be an insight, right? Uh, yeah, could be an insight check. You have been getting good rolls today. It's uh, sixteen. Sounds fairly genuine. Like he's aware of what's going on. He doesn't want anything bad to happen to his people. He doesn't sound particularly keen on the fact that there are people in our Satan that's effectively living in his mothership. So he says that he doesn't care. But you can tell that there's a sense of malice there. But he seems genuine about wanting to take care of the people at the top. I told you all I know. You have the resources of my people. You are welcome to discuss with them. Learn what you can. My city is open and at your disposal. But I request that if you have a means of being able to assist me and assist my people, I welcome it. And if you do not, I also understand. I will say that if you are willing to help me and willing to ensure that the ship can be disabled, I will be willing to provide any other information or any other technology that you can accessibly use from the attack down below. So basically we solve this issue for you and we get samples of technology from your ship. If it provides a benefit, I'm in favor. I'm in favor too. If my team wants to do this, then I will. We are all in agreement. I think it might be good to uh, go by the observatory first. Oh, yes, of course. I have zero complaints. <laughs> I will say, when you are ready to depart to the Hatak, I can get you down to our Satan below using the rings that we have here. There is a chance that you may not be able to return, as the energy down below is a little more unstable, so I can't guarantee your escape. But I can at least ensure a swift arrival. And if not, you can also travel through our Satan below, and I'm sure you can find whatever entrance they have into it. The choice is yours. Oh, I know. And he comes back with like a bunch of like signet rings. He's like, I don't know why people use these to designate that they are or under the will of myself, I suppose. So do you want to fit your size and your size and your no. size? Okay. But said, I will hold on to his. What else are we supposed to form, Captain Planet? Set. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's a modern TV show. Modern. Well, it's, we're in the. You're in 1999. Right. Captain Planet was Captain like Planet. 10 years I, ago. I'm trying to keep my references. Yeah, within the era. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We're going towards the observatory. You go, you go pew down to the bottom of the, or the first floor of the tower, and you guys leave. There are other places you can go in addition to the observatory. Yes, I would like to um, make a stop by the mount. Do we want to split here, or do we want... <laughs> Once we're in there and kind of like out, I'm going to say, well, now that we're away from him, what do all of you really think? I think he's hiding something. It's just... Obviously. Something. 
I agree that something seems off, but at the end of the day, I don't think that he... A, means us any harm, and B, I don't have a terrific amount of faith in his ability to do us a great amount of harm. Mm -hmm. When we first arrived, when placed in the situation of a gunfight, did he snap his fingers and obliterate his enemies? He dove under a table. I'm not worried about him, I'm worried about the orders that he can give. And how much control he still has over the ship below. So I think that probably the best way to go about this is before we actually do whatever we're going to do down there, we actually secure our escape route first, which means we go find some of the uh, scout ships, death gliders, whatnot, and we make sure we can get them, we can fly at least one of them out, and then we take them back to the Stargate. Just think about it. That way, we would have that firepower, and he would not. And I'm sure you could do a lot to uh, a gold with a death glider. Yes. <laughs> so, and then we can go and do all the smashing, whatnot that we need to do once we have our escape route set. Okay. I plan on going by the mouth and uh, leaving some messages on it so in case they pop open the Stargate and try to find out what's going on, they have an idea. Granny, while you're at the observatory, yeah. I would greatly appreciate it if you could, you know, chat up the locals, share some knowledge with them, and dig up a, any secrets that may be lying about. You don't have to beat around the bush theory. I'm an old grandmother. I've been in enough knitting circles to know how to spy. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you two decide needs to be done, have at it. And I will meet you back at the observatory. I'm going to stick with uh, Granny for protection. Okay. Did you say it here? I'm sure you will. Okay. okay. What about you, Tony? What's up? I'll go. Okay. We'll go with uh, checking out the mouth first before we do with the observatory, at least for the time being. All right, you guys make your way towards the mouth area, which we're back down here again. Your mouth is still there. Where the heck is the mouth? Oh, it's next to the Stargate still. Untouched. Uh, there's also a dead guy next to the gate. I forgot about that. Dead guy next to the gate. <laughs> no one came and got him. Right? Nobody came and got him. I He's still there. He's still dead. So I'm going up to the mouth, you know, get into the comms record a message about what, you know, in case they access it, it'll trigger and say, hey, this is this is what we've discovered, this is what we're doing. I'm not sending communications, oh. I'm recording communications. Okay. So that if they pop the gate to get a read on the mouth, they get the message. Makes sense. Because that way, NID can't tell me extra things to do that we don't need to be doing. That's also fair. Um, you, It has been probably about uh, give or take about four, maybe five hours since you uh, since you came through the gate. So make sure everything is still on it, the bow and arrows and everything. All the weapons that you placed are still there. It, it, is, it is untouched. <laughs> record that message and everything, like what I left on the mouth and what we're about to do, what we discovered and all that, and sure. what we're going to try to bring back with us. And actually, you know what? I will pop open the gate to send the message through because I need to make sure they have room to accept flying craft. I want to roll a perception to make sure that we're actually alone. That is a fantastic idea. Yeah, I'll roll that too. Wow. That is a net one. That's a 16. You are focused on the mouth at this point. As usual. Um, 16. With a 16, I can tell you that near the gate, you do not see anyone who is around who shouldn't be. You don't feel any presence that should not be there. This perception will be ongoing in this room. I will and I will actually, notify you if something happens. While you're focusing on that, I can and, six. So, that's fine. That's a good plan. I'm going to dial the P3X888. Opens up. Okay, and then let my comm signal get sent off. You make your communication. You send it out. The mouth says that a transmission has been received. As soon as the transmission is sent, yeah. And like just enough time to where it doesn't see it. I, I, I specifically want to try to cut this off before 
orders get sent back. Okay. That, that was my intention. You don't receive any sort of response within the time being before the Stargate cuts off anyway. Okay. You here, coming from the end of the other city entrance. Somebody approaches. I hear it. For sure. You, okay, you, you ready to stop weapon? Yeah, to Do you get my attention while I'm doing all of my shenanigans? Just, just tap your shoulder. I, shotgun. Okay. Yeah, this person comes towards so you like, and begins to start speaking with you in the, the like the same kind of like Acadian language. Yeah, I'll translate her. Step aside. I must take him to be buried. You can look at this man. He looks like he's like a septuagenarian, like old lanky dude. Looks like he's probably not going to be able to lift the guy, but he's still coming in effectively to pay his respects and take the body for burial. Nope. Which which man? Points towards that man. Crater face or... Crater face, or... yes. Pointing to Namsaru in particular. Okay. I, I look at you like... No, I don't trust him sense motive. At 20. Yep. The individual in particular seems intent on taking the body to be buried. Okay. I, I, I look at you and I say, well, he may have some information that could be of use to us. If he wants to take the body, maybe he can tell us some things. I'm saying that okay. in English, which he's not going to know. That's okay. true. He won't understand you. What the translator actually looks like. It's actually, this is global technology, you're aware of it. It's effectively like this little gray, kind of like slab looking like tablet that has this little tiny device. It's like a little, it's like a swipe, like a little swipe device. You can swipe it right or left and it swipes to like different pages or different like sections of it. Think of it as basically like as you like move the device, it accesses different parts of the computer. But you can like initiate like a translation and then put it through, and it'll feed it through, and then you'll swipe through and see the appropriate like responses in the language. Yeah, culture check to see you're not completely destroying this man's language. Damn it, eighteen. That's bad. Uh, that's not bad. That's fine. <laughs> that's bad. No, that's not bad. Yeah, you can. You're speaking the language well, and you respond accordingly. So yeah, effectively now that's how it's going to be. Okay. So. Without touching him, just go. Okay. I must. Where are you taking him? To his to his kin. Who who's that? His family. He must be buried. Yeah, of course. But where is he buried? You can come see. No, thank you. Then let me take him. Are you going to leave? Are you going to leave a third body? No. Then let me take him. He deserves to be with his family. Is he important? He leads. More led. Leads what? Leads who? Our salvation. F salvation. The deceiver. And by deceiver. Shamesh is a deceiver. He is a false god. And soon to be a dead false god. Copy pasta and English. And, and, I'm, and I'm like, keep them talking. <laughs> okay. Are you going to ask him the questions? Yeah, I'm Okay. Hey, so uh, tell me about your city. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna let him struggle. He has to roll strength check to be able to do it. He's getting away. That's three. <laughs> so you're watching this old man just slowly trying to drag this guy by like his fingers. He has a need. You can make an offer to help him and maybe get some more information out of him. <clears throat> You, it's, you notice already that it's weird that just an old ass guy just coming in to just take the. Nobody's helping him. You know, find out who the new leader is, find out about the city, find out about the fact that the person that we're currently following is being labeled as the deceiver. <laughs> <laughs> There's always two sides to a story. That's why I'm trying. Speaking of which, the other side currently. Alright, let's talk about the observatory in particular. 
Can I make an observe and check for the preservatory? <laughs> I <laughs> preservatory. <laughs> Preserve. Preservatory. <laughs> like the rest of the city, the observatory is basically lined. It's like structured in like this cerulean blue marble and gold like accent. Up top, it then becomes entirely gold until you reach the telescope, which seems to be this bright, like, marbled gray. That looks a bit strange. Both of you roll culture together. Okay. Okay. Use a eureka. <laughs> disadvantage otherwise. <laughs> I need to go to sleep. <laughs> Granny needs some rest. Is that a nat 20? Yeah. That's, be. that's a nat 20 culture check. You Eureka! <laughs> I know all the things. I am culture. I am culture. My rolls are going much better this week. I am culture, Granny. I can tell you about aspects of the planet Dintu that you are currently on. They call it Dintu. It has been known as Dintu since before Shemesh's arrival. Better than Din one, I assume. <laughs> God, that's bad. <laughs> I'm more interested at this point, like, while I want to be looking over the star charts, yeah. and that is important to me, Yeah. as a member of our party, yeah. and with the request having been posed of me, I'm trying to be very chatty as I do so, asking questions, like, of the, not librarian, we're not in a library, but the, pe the people who work here, and or people who the are staff. here, yeah. the staff, just kind of asking about their days, asking about life here, asking, just trying to be as nosy a grandma as I can. That's fine. Um, okay. I can tell you that primarily life on Dintu for the people up in Same have been great. They, they don't fight amongst themselves. They have a, an open forum to discuss about new topics, new forms of effectively going through, you know, they're very malleable when it comes to changing for the better of their own society. Surprisingly, a lot of the choices that they've made have come from themselves and not from any decrees that Shamesh has made. The most that this the, the most that this individual has provided over the course of his continued rule is just technology to make their lives easier. Provided the weapons to help them defend themselves, the ability to transport things to and fro, um, and just minor technological benefits. Help to help them chart more of their stars out, help them learn more about the stars around them. So chalk it up to me being senile or maybe well, I, I didn't sleep terribly well last night. But when we when we first arrived, I was uh, held held almost hostage in in a group of what I would call rebels. Why are people rebelling if life is so nice? Shamesh has told the higher members of society that he is effectively of another world. If he is going to provide the things to benefit and bolster and bolster them and not touch or corrupt or conquer, then he is worth following. Not necessarily considered a god, but more of a demigod to them. This Namsaru person is one of his personal guard who had known him the longest because he's been around as long as Shemesh has. Uh, the, the individuals down in Arsadum apparently uh, believe that they don't call him a demigod, everyone up above considers him a demigod because of what he's done, but they consider him to be a deceiver. Those in Arsadum believe they could rule better, have their people be free to make their own decisions, but they are free to make their own decisions. Nobody's contested him, nobody's fought against him, but he hasn't done anything that they would consider true subjugation. Uh, see, now I've got the plot of the story. Mm -hmm. He's not acting as the prime thought of gold should. Yeah. So he's deceiving them into thinking he's somebody he's not. But, and he's a false god because he's not acting like an actual god like the first prime thought he should. And all of his, the people he's, that were following him were taking what he was saying a different way. There is something that is a little different or something that is unique that you've heard throughout your time here. Uh, you learn more about the tower. While you were learning about um, the constellations and everything up above, you learned from some of, the, some of the younger scholars the names of some of the stars visible from their observatory. For example, the constellation called Abaku, 
uh, which is made up of like nine stars. It's uh, basically resembles the shape of like some kind of ring, and they can be seen most prominently high apparently during Dintu's summer months. Uh, we're in the summer months. The days are longer. The days are actually about three hours longer than they are on Earth. We have 27 hour clocks instead of 24. Our Abaku is basically, this ring in the stars is considered effectively a gate to the high heavens. That's what they consider it to be. And the scholars believe that Dintu's great tower will one day reach the gods above so that they will know true paradise everlasting. While a lot of people like live down here in the bottom and like for like go through an open forum, mm -hmm. the top of the tower is really large for a reason. The populace is huge. They've just continued to increase and increase and increase. And then the tower begins to increase and increase and increase. Nobody's even considered the possibility of like, like I kind of even bring out like, are we trying ex expanding outward? And they're like, oh no, no, we must, we must reach Baku within the next century. We must make it. Yes, at a certain point, when you live at the top of a very big tree, you're going to be very cross when some woodsman comes and chops it down. Most of the people, when you like, show any concern about uh, the tower itself, think, no, the tower's too great. The tower, the tower will never fall. Bismarck syndrome. <laughs> what I call it. I'm just going to keep my Bible thoughts to myself. <laughs> <laughs> what, do, what do people look like around here? Primarily are in like lighter like robes and like kind of like shawls and turbans effectively. I think it, like Babylonian or like Persian style, mm -hmm. as it were. Sure. And the females are a little bit more dressed down. Uh, the males are a lot more dressed up. Mm. Granny's thoughts on this are somewhat complex. And they are effectively, she doesn't even want to help anymore. <laughs> not because she thinks that the leader guy is evil. Not because he's a false god or anything like that. It doesn't matter if they help. Because we, we succeed. We stop them, they won't blow up the bottom. Cool. It's gonna fall. Not because it's an obvious tower of Babel reference, but because you've got this massive tower that's only going up, never expanding out, already poor design, and then you say, hey, let's take our oppressed, upset people, put them at the bottom. Yeah. Now, if you put them at the top and they get angry and they break some stuff, okay, they've broken the top of the tower. At the you bottom. put them at the bottom. Where now you have f***ed up. <laughs> Where, where there's a ship that could explode that, or move or move even, even if we or take collapse. care of that at some point they're gonna make a bomb and blow it up there's or, no point i'm not staying here for the rest just, of my life or just dig under it and sap it to the point where right. all it has to do is lean a little bit right <laughs> the leaning tower my of my Dintu. my point <laughs> the tower <of> Dintu. <laughs> You, this is a meme now, Sean. You have, you have created a Stargate meme. Are you happy with yourself? Yes! I, I, I'm I, legitimately like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll so, stave off disaster, but well, well, at least, it's not going to well, last. Well, well, at least we can say that at least Shemesh isn't digging, isn't digging around. At least he's not a ghoul digger. So, I at this drink. point... I'm kind of on the same level as you, where, like, yeah, I guess we can go get the uh, tech for the base itself. But Granny doesn't even really care about that. Like, she'll do it, but... Granny's selfish and is like, oh, the difference between a place that, like, oh, I saw a dragon, I was scared for my life, but they gave me a neat plant, and, well, this is f I could go get a thing for the base. We could just... I will give you one final thing since you rolled a high enough culture check. Yeah. The top of the observatory is very different to the rest of the architecture therein. Okay. You didn't mention. Yeah. That. that big gray telescope, that's about as thick as thick of Naquita as the Stargate is. How in the hell did they refine that? What you got? <laughs> What'd you roll? I rolled a 20. <laughs> Thickness. A Twenty for thickness. To perceive thickness. To, to, to he's to looking for girls. To perception thickness. 
the easiest place to be able to effectively mingle with people, or that would effectively mingle with you, is op- or in kind of like their open forum area where they've got like their staircase. It's like a Parthenon looking thing, a big chamber we can go through. There's literally everybody just there talking. There's no, you you kind of look at it. I, I don't have a translator, so I don't really see what the language says, but they have like a thing posted like as far as like what's going on today, and I was really talking about it. And you're not speaking the language, so. Oh, you all don't have a translator? No. Oh, no, you don't. So you, you, for a nat twenty, I'm hunting for it's, that booty check. It's, it's not, it's not I can booty. tell you. It's a soft one. You, <laughs> you found booty. You just can't. can't talk to you me. found you booty, can't but you, to the booty. you cannot swoon the booty. If you wanted to really nail home the Tower of Babel, you could have just had everyone speak our language. Everyone speaks one language. I thought about it, but of no. Course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> That'd be too easy. It'd be too easy. <laughs> too on the nose. Too, it'd be obscenely on the nose. But even then, like, Shemesh doesn't have every language available, so... Okay, you go for the one that's effectively the most striking. Mm. Uh, instead of the other ones that are wearing, like, bright blues and, like, greens, effectively. The, this one has a very peach, like, pink color to its to the dress. Uh, it's... it's uh, um, not quite translucent, but enough that you can effectively see the form she... Hold up. Ah, yes. They speak Spanish. <laughs> That's the language, right? I mean, you've got a translator I'm on kidding. you. Do you guys have a translator? Yeah, I have a translator. I have a translator. Oh, okay. Then you you told told apparently, that we have. apparently you guys all have translators. Okay, apparently, never mind. I guess Autumn gave us all translators. We had translators. It's part of the basic kit. Then, I would. then you would have a translator. Okay. If it's on the basic kit, then yes. If you don't want yes. me to have one, that's fine. No, that's fine. You can have one. Hi. I'm new here. You came through the gate, yes? I did. My name is Seth. Your uh, accent is very, um... It's close. We'll, we'll call it, it's close. Close? Yes. My name's Sansu. 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 Uh, I wanted to ask you a couple questions if you have the time. I, uh, there is nothing but time on Dintu. How can I help? Seems like you guys are really very wonderful life up here. Would you say so? They live a wonderful life on Sana, yes. And what, do, what kind of life do you live? I delegate. I am not from here. From this world? No, I'm not from Sana specifically. Through my actions, I initiated the potential of a treaty between Namsaru and Shemesh. I am from below. I have heard no word back. They haven't escorted me out of here, so I assume I am still welcome, but I have not heard what happened to my husband. This isn't just booty, this is plot booty. Uh, I rolled an insight check. I mean, yeah, it's an eight. Just to see if it's truthful or not, but of course I assume that that will be. As she seems to show alarm and concern with the scribe and languages and trying to talk off and on to a couple of individuals, though receiving no considerable block or forum space, she seems kind of outed. So she's obviously not from here, or not welcome. Who is your husband? It would be Namsar. We cannot maintain without food, without proper water, with, without any of the things that Same has above. I, I will not let my people suffer and go to ruin while my husband goes through this idealistic crusade. <coughs> and suggested that they could take, take him in as a show of good faith and let the rest of us come up. I, that's probably not the best way in order to out your husband, but... I was there for most of the interaction. I can give you some information on it. Tell me and everything you know, yes. In exchange, I would also like to know a few things, respectfully. I will tell you what I can. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this, but he's dead. The minute that you end up telling her that her husband is dead, she just kind of she she looks like physically like she just received like a shot straight to her chest. 
You're joking. You, you're, 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 you jest. How? Me and my team unknowingly came into the Stargate. There was the meeting that you and your husband had came for, yes. as well as his comrades. I killed him. That's not true. Fighting immediately started as we entered. His team was among those who attacked my own. We didn't come friendly. We didn't start to fight. But I, an outsider, not of this world, killed my husband. Roll deception. Closing sense motive. Yeah, you get it. She, she's, she's floored by this. You killed my husband. You tipped the balance. I spoke with Simus afterwards. He informed me of who your husband was and some of the situation. And uh, he, despite what your husband may have believed or said, he does not want to start a war. He does not want to invade below. If anything, he says that he wants to, as you want to, come together. I hope that is the case. You hear an explosion from outside. Did we not get down there fast enough? Do you want to go outside and double check what that might be? <laughs> you hear an explosion from the same out of the building. The time in. <laughs> you immediately run out and something follows you. Um, the minute you hear that sound, dash people start running out. Literally just. You can see panic through their faces as they kind of run out. It's like, what could that be? And you're... <laughs> just effectively, just things are like moving and shifting. And it's from literally from like the bottom up, you begin to see every layer of the tower from the ground. Oh, you mean to the top. Start to blow. We're not on the tower. No. Okay, cool. You're around it. We're we're not on the tower either. But we're is it, under. Does it You're appear, at the Stargate. Does it appear that it's falling either towards us or towards the location of the Stargate? As of this point, the bottom of the the bottom, like what the, the Hatak base, you can see a bit, eventually just erupt in smoke and flame. And then the tower over, like, underneath begins to start, like, buckling and start crunching down. And that leans a little bit. <laughs> Hi, Jiri, Granny, wa uh, Granny Watchers would like to power walk to the Stargate. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm running over to Granny Waters. I, I, look, I look at... Uh, Sun Tzu was her name. Sun Tzu. Uh, I'm sorry. And then I run over to Granny Waters. We're leaving. Um, can I pick up Granny? <laughs> you well, straight to pick up Granny do, Waters. Do, do, we, do we hear this conver? Do we hear this do conversation? Hear this? Yeah, I open comms. Dearies, the tower is falling. It's time to go. Wait, did you wait? What? I'm sorry. Say again. Uh, yes. The tower of Babel's going to. Sh it's time to go. <laughs> Start dialing us out. We're on the way. Well, it, you're gonna have to go and get there because it's only gonna be open for a minute, so we gotta wait for you either way. Um, Dial the make a dexterity check on call. top of the strength check you're doing right now. Uh, well, it's a dexterity save. Okay. Did we hear yes, the explosion? Yes, 25. Wow! Okay. Yeah, that's 
Do you hear the explosion? It would have been muffled, but yes, from the grotto, you would have heard the explosion. Do we feel it because it would have Yes, been... you would feel the rattle of it. You feel another one erupt underneath you. The shake is, the, sh the shock wave is a lot worse. Well, dial the gate, get the mount coming around. I get the mount coming around here, dial the gate, hit the number. And this guy was... Not the call button. Just, no, just the numbers. Oh no, I'm hitting. The, I'm getting right. the mouth through. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm getting the mouth through. You program it to kind of do its thing and take a couple seconds to boot up. All and right. Then... Cool. Cool. What was your check? The the strength check was a fourteen. It's enough to lift okay. anyone. Yeah. It's fine. Because I I feel like I can run faster with her on my back mm -hmm. than she can run on her own. It's rude, but true. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was a twenty-five for the deck save. Congratulations. You, you, both pick me you just wanted us juggling. off this planet. That's all you wanted. <laughs> and you wanted a meme. That's selfish. That's gold talk. That is three sixes in a row. Uh, I thought the tension that would start to go down. It's like, no, 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 I don't get like a one. I don't get a slapstick moment. That's just you and dodge falling debris. Like, literally, just like, you, just, you after image that. You go so fast, you can't even see it. It's like, um, you, you, you bolt as quick as you can with, uh, with Clara on top of your back. You can feel the, the heat radiating behind you from the explosion as another one immediately ripples underneath, and you can feel the ground slowly sinking beneath you as you're running towards the grotto. You don't even look back as the entirety of that place is effectively level. So, um, so they detonated the ship? Is that what they did? Don't know. Tower falling. They detonated, they the, detonated ship. the ship. They detonated the ship. And I, I'd give you, you a more detailed view, but... Uh, my line's right. a bit bumpy. You wanna, look, you wanna look back? You're welcome to look back. I would like to look back, yes. The planet cast Fireball. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Lovely. Because, because, and as soon as it hits that, that Naquita telescope, it's going. Does anybody mention the Naquita telescope? Oh, yeah, that's made of bombs, isn't it? <laughs> well, it, it's more like a fuel built cell. Of, it's built of high explosive. You gotta build a telescope of high explosive, Sean. Can, can you, <laughs> they, they, do you tell us this at all? No, because I, I, out of character, have heard it referred to as fuel cells. So it's I, in of... character, would know that, and I didn't think of it. So Thankfully, no, it didn't reach the telescope because I got to a four. We de-escalated a bit, oh. but the place is still basically a crater. <laughs> it's, it's a crater. The tower it, did it stop that falling? Is literally being built to reach the heavens is falling. The tower that is being built to leave it's not leaning. Well, well, it's, well, it's well, leaning well, like this way. So, so, so I mean, but if it's falling in the hole, yeah. it might still stabilize. Some of it is. Some of it, like, it's like crush. <laughs> Oh, no. And it begins to like sink, and some of the floors start like buckling and cracking. It gets maybe about eight or nine floors crunched before it begins to start to lean. And I'm gonna roll and see exactly whether or not it falls. Oh, that's a six! What is it with you and this <laughs> tension high today? It's a six. It's, it's, like, it's, it's, like, it's like the whole the whole last the whole last Everything session. The whole last session, it's like at one the entire time. Now it's like at six the entire time. The entirety time. of the tower falls. I've already moved the mouth up to it. I hit call. You dial, dial my. You, di you dial, put in the G GDO. GDO, the, the map's on its way through. The iris has through. been open. You get the notification when the iris opens up. And, and I look I look at the, the old dude trying to dog, dog, drag the body away. I'm like, look, look, look you. You got two choices. If you stay here, you're going to die. If you come with us, you might live. You say that in English and he doesn't understand you. Say, tell him. Okay. We're waiting on them anyways. Okay. Two choices. Stay here, die. Come with us, live. Come with me if you want to live. And and point point out to the tower. Yeah, yeah. He look he looks to, he looks and then he just, he can hear the sounds outside. <laughs> What'll it be? He starts hobbling slowly towards <laughs> the gate. <laughs> Good Still time. trying to pull me, I'm sorry. Like, uh, leave no, him, leave, leave, him, him, leave him, leave him, leave him. He's gone, leave him. He, leave him. Tower's gonna slam, get out of your so, jam. So, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Make a final, oh, a final athletics check. No, I shoved the dude through though, I'm like, get through. Alright, so he's... 
So he's gone. He's gone. 17. He's gone. Woo! Go. One more chance to see how bad things can be from here. Down to a five. Okay. Yeah, that's oh. fine. Um, only a five. Oh, no, no, only a five. Yeah, well, yeah. He rolls again and it's a six. Yeah, bolt. As the tower begins to fall, you can literally feel, you guys feel the rubble literally shake. Or, like, from up top, all over the top of the, the grotto. And there begins to be, like, dust and rocks begin to fall. You both, thankfully, still survive but are trapped as a, as a piece of debris falls, and a, a large enough piece of debris falls and blocks your way to the grotto entrance. Okay, so I'm then a, I take my bandolier shotgun shells, I hand it to you and say, pull out your knife, cut it open, dump the gunpowder in the hole, cracks in the rocks. I do the thing. And so both of us do the thing, I tell them, stand about 15 feet back, and then, and then get around the corner, light it, because it's going to send a bunch of shrapnel this way when I do it, and I can't really avoid that. Uh, and try to blow the rocks apart enough that we can like pull them out of the way and get them through. We should yeah. consider explosives to be an engineering or a science check. It's an engineering yeah. check. That's an engineering because, check. Because I'm trying to blow stuff apart. That's like an engineering. Go for it! And then, do I need to roll a dex to eat from the shrapnel? No, because I'm giving you plenty of time to get away. Yeah, you'll, you'll have time. Okay. Really? You failed okay, me. That's a so nine. Wait, you, got, you rolled a nine. I rolled a nine. Okay, then I'm going to roll to do the same Hold on. Thing Hold on. And um, it's all like gunpowder all together. It doesn't like shrapnel and hit you, but it pops. Your ears start to ring because... Ah! Okay. So you, you're, well, you're, you're, like, you're mildly, like not deafened, but like you're mildly like... Is yeah, ears ringing? Yeah, his ears are ringing for okay. a little bit. Okay, well... Did I did I accomplish in getting the stuff loose? You accomplished in getting most of the stuff loose, and you said you were going to assist with like a yeah. uh, engineering check. Yeah. It's yeah. uh, a ten. That's a ten. A nine and a ten. Uh, you get enough. You set the charge. It goes through. It makes a small enough hole that Granny could fit through. Okay, and then we're gonna pull more stuff out of the way for him to pull through. While you're doing that, yeah. I'm going to use my one remaining Eureka point to do a thing I didn't know I would have to do. Yeah. Which is reduce the time it takes to activate a Stargate or similar astronomical device by one round per Eureka point. That's probably a good plan! And I say, I say, hey. Damn it, John. I'm, I'm like, hey. Using Staff weapon. Using, the rubble. using a pencil. Outline them properly. She's, okay. she's gonna pull out her staff. 12 seconds she's to gonna, do it. She's gonna pull out her staff weapon and shoot the rubble so he can get through. One. Should, I, should I do the sonic? Because that's gonna. Here. Nope, that fire just blasted open. Alright, that's three. three. We need we need the push. Three, six. Four. No, five. Six. Do I need to roll for the staff weapon? Seven. Strong. Just in time. <laughs> do we, do we roll you roll for, for the staff the... weapon? Yes, go ahead. Okay, staff weapon to. Yeah, to. First, uh, that's enough. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then you can make your way through. Okay. And we we all yeet through the Stargate. You. <laughs> it's like it's like in the episodes when the gate comes through and like literally everything's about to explode and fall apart and they all uh, jump wait, into the uh, gate. No, no, no. Before everyone does that, I'm going to input um the three four two one code so we don't get meddled to death. Yes. Yeah, the yeah. Irish code's probably a because, good because, Probably a good oh, idea. Because we have to do it every time it opens. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, you probably shouldn't jump through before. All right. You should have caught that. Yeah, that's fair. I was kind of hoping you guys would just die in the iris. Oh, good. Oh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's how we end this. That, that's how we end it. Now we have to roll with new characters. Thanks, Sean. Um, like, as we're going through. Yeah. <laughs> did, did it work? I hope it worked. You jump into the game. Oh, are you going? Are you going to do that to us? Just give me a second. <laughs> Everything's fine. It's okay. 
You guys, literally, as you guys all jumped through and came in through the other side of the Phoenix site, you roll down the ramp, get a little bumped and bruised, but for the most part, you guys are okay. The Malp's there, perfectly fine. Still has whatever tech you left old with it. Old dude is there. The old dude is like... So, SGP personnel. And you kind of hear stuff off the top, and like... Some of the some of the like the engineers are like looking at the monitor, and you see some of them run up and like, well, wait, what, what's going on? And then general lawyer kind of approaches and kind of looks down at the monitor. SG thirteen to the gate room, debriefing now. Well, we're uh, okay. I mean, he wouldn't be able to see anything because the map's already back through. Yeah, but he would see everything that happened, I guess. Oh. And he looks, he sees like the people down there. Um, he sees, he sees like, us. Yeah, he sees, he sees like the old man just kind of like there, and I was like, "Don't do anything stupid. Don't get hurt or die. Got it? Not a threat. Just a warning." I want to return. There's no return. They'll talk to you about it. It's actually you were exactly right. Because of the fact that everything effectively caused a chain reaction, you guys find out as I'm debriefing. We'll do a proper debrief before session three. Mm -hmm. You'll eventually find out that the lawyer will tell you that the gate is no longer operable, which tells you either one of two things. Either they some either the gate was either removed from its base and the dial and the dialing device was destroyed, or the gate was destroyed. The, if the gate's destroyed, there effectively is no way back to that planet unless you're doing interstellar travel. Yep. You missed the yep. inside of the Hatak mothership, which was completely mapped. <laughs> Thank you. This, no, 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 no. Don't blame us. This is your fault. This is all your fault. This is all your fault. Don't put this on us. <laughs> Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Palmer. <laughs> exactly. Were there any death gliders? Oh, a few. It was the Did scout ships and mainly just the ship itself that was enough that was enough to like make the whole place go. Yeah, I yeah, I, I really wanted us to have a scout ship. Yeah. So we could fly it through and have our own little mobile command post. But no, you took that from me. I mean you have one, but hers is off hers has got her. No no no. But her. we would have one. Oh you guys you want your own we, mobile we, home our, effectively. Our, our own mobile <laughs> command post that we can customize and do stuff with. But no, you stole that from us. Somebody spell jammer. Granny could store all of her telescopes and everything there. But he could have his he Ferdinand. could have his own armor. No no Ferdinand doesn't Ferdinand get to Ferdinand doesn't get to Ferdinand doesn't get to I mean idealistically it makes sense because you can't have all this technology with the rest of the SG teams this early on. It, it does it's season three, like come no, on. No, 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 that's fine. I just want you want you to own up that you stole this from us. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm so excited <laughs> to see what the f was down there, man. Yeah. He, and he he would have gotten a death glider. You'll get your chance. I'm not worried about like the oh well it was mapped out because Sean's a good DM and so those maps will see the light of day. Awesome. Aimed something else. Yeah, <laughs> aimed something else. Is that a one man aircraft? It's one that, man it, it's, no, it's two. It, 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 it's one person effectively handles the navigation, the other one handles the guns. So yeah. man, and they have cool and they have like it's a ghost with the mechanics of and, the, and they have like a very a lot bigger version right. of your staff flipping on them. That's pretty cool. Well, like it could have like, been me and Granny. And <laughs> yes. It could have. Yes. Okay. <laughs> we, we could have been teamed up in one death glider. They could, we could have teamed them up in death glider. Here, here, here's the thing. This was entirely on the tension dot. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. Hey, thanks for checking out another episode of Stargate Phoenix here at Control Alt Crit. If you'd like to be able to play the Stargate SG-1 RPG, please go to StargateTheRPG.com to purchase a physical copy or download a digital PDF of the Stargate SG-1 role-playing game. And hey, if you'd like to play with members of the Control-Alt-Crit fam, just join the Control-Alt-Crit Discord. You can access our Discord link from www.controlaltcrit.com. Thanks very much, and we'll see you around for another episode.